All right. See if anyone can hear us. Got a thumbs up. Audio check. Thumbs up. There we go. We're good. All right. First time we're meeting. Here we go. All right, I want to welcome everybody. We're going to call the meeting of the uh, Lake Zoo's Body Commission order for today, 420, and with a budget of allegiance first. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll do a roll call. I believe we have all commissioners except for Commissioner Cronin. Now get a motion to excuse Commissioner Cronin. So moved. I'll second. Got a motion and a second to excuse Commissioner Cronin. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, so first action item is gonna be approving the minutes from 316. Hopefully all commissioners had a chance to review the minutes. Does anybody have any changes they wish to suggest? Walsh, I see no um, um, changes that need to be made, and I'm willing to offer a motion to approve. I'll second. Got a motion and a second to approve the minutes of 316.22. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. All right, guest business. Now's the time for anybody in the audience, online or in person, to discuss anything with the commission, except for if you want to discuss the public hearing for short-term rentals, that will be a public, there'll be a public comment at that. So if there's anything other than that you wish to discuss with the commission, now's the time. Is there anyone? Anything else? No. All right, we'll move on to the public hearing. So we're going to have the public hearing here on the uh, LUA 2022-0046, the short-term rental code amendment. Public hearing is going to happen. I'm going to open the public hearing. Staff will give a presentation. The commissioners will discuss amongst themselves and staff, and then we'll open it to public comment. Then after that, we'll end the public comment. There will be more discussion between staff and commissioners, and then we will move forward with uh, some form of recommendation to the council. Virtually turn off their mics when they're not yeah. being called upon. Thank you. All right. I can see why that's virtual if you're not talking or you don't if you're not being called upon, make sure your mic is on mute. All right. We'll open it up with uh staff report. Okay, Jenny, can you please put them in the presentation? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For the audience online, this is our first hybrid meeting of the Planning Commission. The first time in our person in person for two years. Okay. 
Always remember, technology is our friend. Yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for bearing with us there. I just wanna make sure, can everyone hear me out there? Good, okay. So good evening commissioners, council members that are attending, as well as members of the public that may be watching on Zoom or in person. Um, tonight, we are gonna to have the public hearing for the short-term rental code amendment, which is an amendment that we've been working on um, for the past few months here. Um, so at the conclusion of this meeting, we will hold the public hearing. And if you wish to provide comment, that would be the time. Um, but first off, I just wanted to give a little bit of a background, um, what the existing code looks like. And if you could, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, can you go back? Okay. Um, so the regulations have more or less remained unchanged since it was initially adopted back in 1998. So since then, the short-term rental landscape has changed massively, especially with the advent of companies like Airbnb and other online platforms like Verbo. Um, and and um, our code currently, it does um, require owner occupancy. Um, so what that means is that the owner has to live on site. So whether they live in an ADU and rent out the house or live in an ADU and rent out the house or rent out rooms within their house, they just have to live on site. Um, and it is limited to 10 consecutive days. So they cannot stay for more than that. And then 30 total days in a calendar year. Um, and what the approval process looks like currently is that um, it does require an ACUP, which stands for Administrative Conditional Use Permit, um, and it is allowed in all residential zones. So currently only one um, short-term rental operator has been officially licensed with the city. All of the others that may be out there are not regulating compliantly. Next slide, please. Um, so basically our goal here was to modernize and simplify the code and also account for a lot of those new short-term rentals that have been popping up um, since Airbnb and Verbo took off. Um, we also wanted to streamline the review process. So again, instead of that ACUP process, um, we have provided a different process um, that would be a little bit more simple and streamlined for the average homeowner to do. Um, and then we also wanted to acknowledge community concerns out there. And throughout this process, we've received a couple um, public comments now, which have been really great. And next slide, please. Um, so for the overview of the code amendment process, um, we've been working on this again for the past few months. Um, back in December of 21, 2021, we um, introduced the scope of the work. And then we held an additional two work sessions in the February and March meetings. Um, again, our most recent meeting was at Mar was March 16th and is when we provided our the really the first draft of what the code would look like. Um, so, so four public comments were received between that time of that comment period between February 20th and March 2nd. Um, and then one additional comment came in um, just yesterday, I believe. So those comments have all been sent out to the planning commission as far as I know. Um, so again, when the planning commission did review the code language on March 16th, um, it was generally supportive um, of moving this along the public hearing, which is where we're at now. Um, we went ahead and sent um, notice to commerce as required by the state. So that was sent out on March 18th, our 45 day notice. Um, and then, of course, city council is required to hold a separate public hearing to consider the commission's recommendation, and that is slated to be held on May 10th. Next slide. So um, at the March 16th meeting, we received some pretty specific guidance from the planning commission. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and go over the uh, guidance that we received from that meeting today. Um, so we heard loud and clear that the Maintain, or maintaining the owner occupancy requirement is um, proposed. So, um, which means that the owner has to live on site um, with the unit that is being rented. So whether they are in an ADU um, or it's being rooms rented out, it doesn't matter, either one works. Um, we also are trying to make the 
language as clear and objective as possible. So that included amending the definition just a little bit to include specifically um, that ADUs are allowed. Um, and then we wanted to provide some more clarity on what exactly the code enforcement process would look like. Um, we're also expanding the noticing requirement to a 300 foot radius. So 300 feet being the radius that we use for most land use development applications that do require public notice. The difference here is that um, the public notice would have to be furnished by the applicant and then a copy would need to be provided to us. Um, and then we also wish to address parking impacts. So that includes boat trailers that was mentioned at the last meeting, um, just to make sure that if um, rentals do include boat trailers that they have a place to park them and so the parking does not spill onto the public street. Next slide please. Um, and then I just wanted to take a moment to go over some highlights of the new code amendment. So it does maintain the owner occupancy requirement. That part is not changed. Um, it does eliminate the maximum um, consecutive days allowed. Um, so there is no longer that 10 consecutive day limit or a 30 day total limit per year. Um, it also limits uh, the number of rental parties to two or eight individuals in total with no party being um, greater than six people. So we no longer require that type two ACUP permit. Um, instead, it will be under a business license. So it'll be a much more streamlined, faster project, um, but there will still be review required. Um, and then again, as part of that review process, um, a health and safety inspection will be required. And that's just um, to make sure that everyone is on a level playing field since um, you know folks are staying in an kind of an unfamiliar environment. So we wanna make sure that the exits are posted just like you would have in a hotel, for example. Um, and then again, as I said, so the notice would have to be provided by the applicant to all owners within 300 feet. And then the parking requirement that we have established is one parking space per rented bedroom. So in addition to the two stalls that would be required for the single family residential use, um, one stall would be required for each additional bedroom. Next slide. And then um, finally for our findings and staff recommendations. So we noted in the staff report, that the code amendment does meet the criteria for um, land use code amendments, which is found in um, chapter 14 of the Lake Stevens Municipal Code. Um, it does meet, meet the SEPA and public notice requirements and staff is met recommending that the commission take public comment, discuss the amendment and forward any recommendation to city council to approve um, this land use code amendment. Um, so the full, the full land use code amendment can be found in attachment one of your packet. And then next slide, please. And with that, are there any questions for staff at this time? So commissioners, we've had hopefully had time to start reviewing and we've got the other two online, right? I can't, I just wanna make sure they're taken, that they're ready. I have a, I have a question. Yes. Um, if it's okay. Oh yeah, go ahead. Um, so I, my initial question that I wrote down before I came in had to do with uh, the new code subsection B4 and B5, um, because I, I, I thought there, when I first read it, it looked like maybe a discrepancy between having eight total or having six total. Um, but since you gave your presentation, I now understand that the six is for each rental agreement. You, and you could have more than one rental agreement simultaneously on the property. Correct. So I'm wondering if it might be clarifying um, maybe to add um, in subsection five, um, the total number of guests covered by an, like each rental agreement or an individual rental agreement that might make it a little bit more clear. That, that's just a suggestion I was gonna throw out. Um, and then my other question I, I had was um, with removing the limit on consecutive days or uh, total number of days in a year, is the, is the idea that market pressure would prohibit people from staying for a long period of time? Because I know with Airbnbs and Verbos, they tend to be more per night than, I mean, somebody would have to be really 
really want to stay in Link Stevens for a year <laughs> at, the, at that nightly rate. So is that kind of the concept is removing that restriction because it probably, the market wouldn't bear it anyway to have people stay a long time? Right, so we acknowledge that um, it's not just vacationers that use Airbnbs, it can also be travel nurses. So we would rather, um, instead of restricting the use, restrict the length of the stay. Oh. I have a feeling if you go with more than 30, now you're yep. entering into rental agreements per the state law, yep. you know, month to month rentals. That makes sense. You would probably move over that. I'm gonna, I'm not, I'm guessing that's where, if you went more than 30, I think you'd start entering that world of, now you got a month to month tendency maybe. Right, right. Any other questions? Yes. I have a question. Um, what's the rationale behind implementing the uh, business license requirement? Um, we're gonna, right now, this is still amongst the commissioners. I would up to the public yet. Um, I'll uh, call upon the public here in a moment for the uh, public comment section. Oh, okay, thank you. Sorry. No worries. Yes. Go ahead, Janice. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you. Um, hearing me in high rent in our first time. Thank you, Verizon, for rearranging my day. Uh, we are wondering, I am wondering, um, what is what we're gonna do to backfill those that are already doing this? It kind of does, it, it puts it all in compliance, but what is the city going to do to backfill compliance? And then the other question was asked and answered by Commissioner Jennifer Davis, and I'm so grateful to her. So my only question before public comment, and I have one afterwards that I'll withhold, is what is the city putting into any sort of wording of what to do with people who are already doing this? We only have one that's licensed, but many people doing this. Okay, um, Mrs. Director Wright, I will um, take that question. So we're starting a campaign between our planning staff and our code enforcement staff to put together some flyers and some material that we can distribute on our website. We will reach out to the facilities that are operating in the city. And as they've had an opportunity up till now to be licensed as a vacation rental and have chosen not to do that, they will have to come into compliance and go through the um, program as it is today. So that's going to be our approach. And then the person that has the legal, legal tourist home does become grandfathered and is vested and can continue operation of their, their legal conforming facility as it is. Janice, did I answer your question? I uh, can continue with these new guidelines for, um, you know, insurance, noise, garbage, utilities, everything else that we're we're proposing tonight, correct? Anyone who's not licensed would have to come under these regulations if adopted and comply with these standards. Okay. Okay. Yes, thank you. Commissioner Welch, my questions Here's have been answered. When it's executed and published. So okay. after council action, five days after council action becomes effective. Okay. So there is an opportunity for folks to get in and apply as a tourist home under today's regulations. Um, and they would have to make that decision, which is more beneficial. Gotcha. Uh, Commissioner Dewar, I saw you had your hand up. Janice asked my question. Thank you, though. Commissioners. <laughs> uh, well, the question. <laughs> I don't know if I, I had some changes. I don't know if you guys all got them in email. Yeah. So I had a couple of significant larger changes that I was suggesting um, after looking at a few things. But a couple of quick ones real quick. When it comes to signage, um, and then on number th C3, signage will be limited according to our sign, is, sign law. But then under four, there's no outward appearance of a business. Um, I'm kind of conflicted on, if, if you have a sign, then you're not really, no outward appearances. You have an outward appearance, you have a sign. So I was just kind of confused on those two on how they will work together. So the sign being four square feet maximum, that is just a carryover from our general sign code. So any single family residence can have a sign that's up to four square feet in size. Okay. And then I know it's a kind of a strange question when it comes to, to meal service, is that just 
the actual owner making the meals? Is that what that refers to? Okay, just making sure. Uh, the other significant ones I guess I wanted to mention was, I know we have the owner occupied requirement and I suggested and I sent a big um, thing that I got where possibly we could, instead of having it be owner occupied, have the, um, I guess I can read it for the record real quick, where we would change B subsection two would be um, short-term rentals is the rental of a dwelling unit or portion thereof, subject to any additional con covenants and restrictions on individual properties. That would be basically with your HOAs, is what that refers to. And then under that would be a subsection one, local property representative. The property owner must designate a local property representative who shall be available 24 hours per day, seven days per week, for the purpose of A, responding within one hour to complaints regarding the condition, operation, or conduct of the occupants of the short-term rental, and B, taking remedial action to resolve any such complaints. The name, address, and telephone contact number of the property owner and the local property representative shall be kept on file at the city. The failure to provide the contact information, failure to keep the contact information current, <clears throat> excuse me, failure to respond in a timely manner to complaints or the occurrence of repeated complaints may result in the suspension or revocation of approval and or civil or criminal penalties. And I was looking if the council would consider replacing the owner occupied with this writing instead since one of the concerns was someone who would be taking action on the on the occupants who are renting the place. Because and that was mainly because I know that several of the homes that are already doing it right now, they rent out the whole entire home. And I know, especially if you're a, uh, I get for incidences, because there's always, there's always what ifs in this world. But if someone's a snowbird, you know, if they're gone for the winter time, they might be renting out their whole home while they're gone. And so, but if they have a, a person on file with the city that they must, that is available, I would think that would suffice the concerns we all had with not having representation there of, of occupants that get out of control, I would say. That would be my recommendation of maybe replacing two and then eliminating three because of that. And I wonder if the commission thought about the idea. Janice. Yes, Janice. Um, that was my other comment. I was actually going to hold it after public comment. So I would hope that the other commissioners would agree with me that let's hear from our public and then let's discuss that. I appreciate your comments before the meeting, uh, but I'd like to hear what the public has to say on that. Thank you. And then the other thing to have woven up because the public's going to be doing is replacing five with the other thing, which is about the occupancy. Since we don't know how all houses are bif different sizes and how much they run out, I went more with the idea of the occupancy is the maximum, <clears throat> maximum, maximum occupancy of the rental should be based on the international building code standards. And the property, property owner shall be responsible for ensuring the dwelling unit is in the conformance with the maximum capacity. And that is to make sure that, you know, the, in, the building code already has how many you should allow to have in your house or should it be staying. So I went with that code instead of us coming up with an exact number because of the different size of homes in Lake Stevens. So just that, that's a couple of language changes I've suggested. And Commissioner Walsh, can I um, offer some commentary on your second suggestion? You may. So under the International Building Code, this type of unit, a single family unit or two family unit is deferred to the International Residential Code. Oh, okay. And under the International Residential Code, there is no maximum occupancy. The reason for that is you can't make a discrimination on what constitutes a family. That could be a multi-generational family, a blended family, a group of non-related people. So under that type of facility, there is no maximum occupancy. When you get into a mixed use building, an apartment, something like that, then you're back into the International Building Code and then you can make occupancy based on square footage, but under a single family or a two family unit, there would be no cap okay. under the International Building Code. Then I will pull that suggestion. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> In the city I got that from, probably should pull that from there. <laughs> <laughs> got pulled that off of another city's code. <laughs> All right, so with our discussion for now, and I think we're gonna open it up to the public this time. So just a moment, I'm gonna open the public comment section of the public hearing. And I'm gonna first, if the 
people here don't mind, I'm going to go to the ones online. I know somebody jumped in right away, so they're obviously would like to discuss this. So if anybody online wants to have public comment, now would be the time to raise your hand and let us know you want to make a comment. And state your name, please. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I have a I have a question. I guess more of a question than a comment. My name is Andrew Megredichian. Um, my question is, what was the rationale behind implementing the business license requirement in the new code? Yeah, so I can take that question. So the business license requirement is so that um, applicants can remit taxes that are required for lodging to the state. So the state actually requires that in um, the wax. Okay, thank you. Any other public comment online? Okay, so we'll move to the uh, public comment here in the here with us. Anybody here wish to make a public comment about this resolution? Yeah. Please step right up. We just need your name, sir, for the record. My name's Todd Spradlin, and I, I have a comment on Mr. Welch's proposal to change from an owner occupancy to a representative. The owner occupancy, to me, seems to be preventative of unwanted behavior. If the owner is there, they may talk to the owner, get permission to do certain things. But if we have a representative, kind of a toothless, it, it seems toothless to me, because if any bad behavior, which we have experienced, um, happens, they're gonna get a hold of this person after the fact. The fact the uh, behavior has already been done. I just think that the owner occupancy makes sense and is just there to keep a little police on. The snowbird thing, snowbirds go for months at a time. And that probably falls under the uh, long-term rental, I would think. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have a comment for this? Please step up. Just need your name for the record. My name's Eileen Spradlin. So if um, you are notifying property owners in a 300 square foot radius, can they object to having a short-term rental next door? So you can absolutely submit your comments to the city, but it ultimately does come down to whether it complies with the code or not. Mm -hmm. And then, um, can you clarify the signage again? Because it is my understanding these homes need to look like homes in the neighborhood, and they're going to be allowed to have a four foot sign now? Yeah, so just to clarify, any single family residential home um, is limited to um, any sign, whether it's commercial or non, non commercial. Um, of a total square footage of four square feet. So this would then be extended to the short-term rental use as well. And uh, as for code enforcement, uh, when we experienced issues with the short-term rental next door, there was one officer that was um, responsible for all code enforcement, basically to the bigger um, so we currently have just one code enforcement official. Um, though code complaints can be taken a variety of ways, you can contact City Hall, you can submit online, um, and then those will be taken care of accordingly. That was not our experience. Um, we were asked to take photographs, to uh, submit evidence of infractions, and this is this puts a great burden on the neighbors to these establishments. I, I know that we've had, um, like many other cities, we've had kind of ups and downs with employees. So sometimes keeping code enforcement has been one of the positions we. I know when I was on the council's whole position, we kind of came and went. It was hard to keep one or two. So I think uh, hopefully the we can probably hopefully suggest to the city hopefully on the next budget to maybe add some more if that's even on there. I don't know if there's any openings for code enforcement right now or not. So, no. 
Well, the kinds of um, behaviors that we experienced in the um, short term rental next door would be more appropriate to contact the police. Yeah, that, that is your option. If there's illegal yeah. behavior, that would be contacting 911. Yeah. As an offense. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Good evening. My name is Kirsten Hagen. I am a lifetime resident of Lake Stevens um, and care very much about uh, this community. This community, as we all know, has experienced uh, a lot of growth um, lately, and it is a vibrant, um, growing, attractive community. Uh, a good reason, a major reason for that is because it is such a family-friendly community. We have a great school system. We have great sports um, here for youth. We have a lot of uh, expanded parks. We have the use of the lake. We have lots of community events that are designed to attract families, uh, not just from the Lake Stevens community, but from greater areas around Lake Stevens. And I think that that is much to Lake Stevens credit, that that is the focus that this community has taken and has successfully, very successfully, I might add, implemented. As we all know, property rates here have gone way up because this is a desirable community to live in and it is a desirable community to come and bring your family. What my concern is with, for example, the changing it from owner occupied to a registered agent is that encourages and almost ensures Lake Stevens becoming a community for partying. We see enough of that already on the lake in the summer. I live on the lake, live on the water, and I see nonstop during the day people who do not live on the lake, who put their boats on the lake, who are partying, drinking, um, loud stereos in their boats, et cetera. And that is difficult enough to live with without having it also occurring in a neighbor um, who is renting a, a house or apartment or whatever. If you have a registered agent, it, there's no recourse on an evening or weekend or three-day holiday for you because the city isn't open to get the name of a registered agent. Um, if those registered agents are, are online, I guess we would all be responsible to track that person down. And there's just no assurance whatsoever and there's no um, accountability there. I completely agree with Mr. Spradlin that it is a attacking a problem after the fact. I think the message needs to be sent that this is a family friendly community and that it's great to come and rent uh, places here if you want to be in a rowing tournament or whatever, but this is not party central. And I feel super strongly about that one. I live part-time in Hawaii and Hawaii has had a huge problem with VRBOs and uh, Airbnbs because of the partying factor, the traffic factor, the garbage factor, et cetera. And in their legislature currently, they are going to limit temporary rentals to 90 day minimums because of it. That's how huge of a problem that they have had as a result of that. I think that in the news just this last week, there was a, a rental party that was going on and 200 people, young people were there, shots were fired and someone wound up dead. That is exactly the type of event that we are trying to prevent um, by having the owner occupied um, restriction in the in the ordinance. I would strongly encourage the um, commission to recommend that the owner occupied language remains intact. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Either online or in the... Yes, ma'am, please. 
Hi, I'm Nikki Odegaard, and I also live on the lake. And um, actually, Kirsten particularly has absolutely nailed what I would like to say, so I won't repeat everything. But um, we all know the lake is a wonderful party place all summer long. Um, the dangers of um, quite often really bad boat drivers and things like that who clearly don't do it very often, whatever, the, the, the craziness that happens, you know, it's very noticeable and, um, and it's dangerous. Uh, I, I mean, it really is. It's a matter of time before <laughs> people die. But, um, and other than that, of course, there's the fact that it's not just unpleasant, but the noise situation. And the other one that I would really, really do feel is, is an issue is the parking issue. Um, most of the places I know, I mean, some of them, you know, I mean, I actually have a nice long drive and could fit a bunch of people in, but it's not very convenient and people usually end up parking right up by the road if they can, you know, it's, it's, people will do whatever is easiest for them. And when, um, when you live there, that's one thing, but um, if you're just visiting for a few days, uh, you don't care, is what I've kind of noticed. And um, so, so really, basically, it, it's what these guys were just saying. I, I feel like um, we're such a great community. And I, I certainly don't want to say no Airbnbs and things, because I love Airbnbs. They have their place. But, um, but to just um, the owner being present or at the very least, maybe the next door neighbor being the person that if they don't happen to be there for that time, maybe it could be a next door neighbor. But if you've just got some random name that's your, your person to be in touch with, I don't think that's enough to, um, I just don't think that would suffice for getting hold of them. And then my probably biggest thing is, um, is just the actual enforcement of things. And uh, it's all part and parcel of what, what these guys were just saying. It's, um, we don't have enough policemen around, I don't think, for when things do get, they get crazy. And um, certainly um, I haven't really had that much, I happen to be lucky and have retired people on both sides of me. So <laughs> it's, it's tended to be not so immediately an issue for me, but I sure do see it. And um, I, I just think, um, yeah, you know, kind of just, we don't want to be like, there's reasons why places like Shalan are now really trying to pull back and um, Ocean Shores, for instance, now, you know, and, but once people have kind of got in and they've got used to, to um, like you were saying, there's only one or two that are actually registered. And, um, and I'm pretty sure that's what will continue happening is, why would you register if you can get away with just doing it quietly? And so anyway, that's, you know, I'm not an expert, but these were just the things that concern me <laughs> and um, enough to, to come and say something. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. With that, we will close the public comment section of the public hearing. We'll return it back to the commissioners. Good. Any more discussion or what was your all's pleasure on how to proceed? I had a quick comment, um, if it's okay. Right. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say that I appreciate you uh, proposing the additional language in the spirit of how over the years we've really tried to balance and put a lot of thought into balancing uh, private property rights and the needs of the community. Um, so I always think that you particularly do a good job of trying to think outside the box. Um, having said that, I think my concern um, is kind of about burden shifting and the idea that having an owner on site is does have a chilling effect for crazy behavior. Um, and having the um, representative really does kind of shift the the um, the burden for reporting something that's already occurred. And this was articulated by the public, um, and so that that was kind of my first thought was who should be responsible for at, at first blush with dealing with bad behavior. Um, and and my, I, I think I land on the side of having the person who's profiting from it be the person that is the first line. Um, to deal with anything that could potentially be a problem. So that's that was my comment on that. And uh, I'll second that. Uh, you know, if it was 1998 was the last time that this uh, or 
it's been what 24 years since this has been right at the quarter century maybe a soft landing to have owner occupied uh or key owner, owner occupied dwelling and really just to see how how this works um i would like to see from a from a standpoint of uh the policing the, the management of this by the city if are we going to have these dwellings these units come under the guise of, of the city are people going to come out of the woodwork if there's fidelity in the process then maybe you know years down the road we can reconsider um, some of the uh the owner occupied language uh, but just to make sure that you know as a community i you know fully agree we live here um you know teach in the school district we love it and uh so just to make sure that citizens are, are confident uh, moving forward that we are kind of exercising that soft landing going into it. I agree with those of you. There are two commissioners online have any co comments or questions. Um, I, I did. Uh, no, I appreciate, first off, I appreciate uh, the public coming out and speaking about this topic. It's been a little while since we've had uh, active public comment on, on things. Um, and um, I echo what my fellow commissioners have said. You know, I, I appreciate um, the sense of, uh, of, you know, private property and, you know, it's yours to do with what you wish. However, you know, um, I do feel strongly that it should be an owner-occupied uh, site. And, and, you know, when you have an issue, um, it's very easy to tamp that down before it gets into a big issue versus having to wait an hour for somebody to uh, be phoned in, say, Arlington or Seattle, who might be able to do something about it. I think um, uh, what we have here as initially presented goes a long way also to um, identifying these properties that are presently uh, behaving as VRBOs that are under, under the radar and uh, with, uh, with luck and with some enforcement, hopefully we'll be able to bring them into compliance and into a safe, uh, into a, um, safe status for those who are, uh, who are utilizing that uh, VRBO. So uh, I, I can't really support the, the amendment as proposed, but um, I do appreciate it coming forward. Thank you. Mr. Osford, do you have any comments or questions? <laughs> And if I may, this was the um, comment that I was going to bring up at the beginning of the meeting that I wanted to defer was the definition of owner authorized agent or property manager. And then with your a proposed amendment that came into light. So um, I, I think that we are in a good place with how it's written. I have been a proponent of this um, conversation from the beginning that this is mostly going to impact waterfront property and like Stevens. This is going to be an issue that impacts um, our lake and our lake community more than I think any of our other neighborhoods. I may be wrong, prove me that. Um, but our comments tonight, and I was so appreciative of our people that spoke this evening, um, comparing us to things that are going on in Chelan, comparing us to things that are happening in, in Hawaii, although I'd love to be there now, comparing us to um, other waterfront communities is really where our mindset needs to be right here. Um, our property taxes continues to go up, the uh, noise and um, nuisance ordinances and some of these waterfront properties around the state and region uh, continue to expand as they bring in more Airbnb. I love Airbnb, I'm not anti Airbnb, but let's make sure that we stick with what is currently in the wording that we sadly do not um, entertain the amendment as written um, uh, this evening and that we move forward with how we're going to <clears throat> hold these people into compliance so that it's not Quelching down the spirit of this industry, <clears throat> but merely monitoring it to a point that we can continue to be neighbors <clears throat> and stewards of our lake uh, while um, entertaining uh, these folks that wanted to participate in, in lakefront. So those are my thoughts. I think it's been um, also reiterated by the other commissioners and I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, so I think all the commissioners have had a chance to comment. Mm -hmm. um, have any more questions of staff or anything? 
Sure. I do. Uh, regarding the signage in inside the dwelling, uh, as you mentioned, the, the occupants may not be familiar. They need to understand their the exit out. Can these be vinyl signs, like you know, uh, some something that adheses to the walls, or is it more of a permanent thing, like you would see here? Semi permanent. Yeah. So that's not something that's been fully fleshed out at this time. Um, we will be creating a checklist and working with our building official to develop some specific standards and probably a handout too that goes along to any potential operators or applicants out there that will detail all that information. Does our building officials do that or is it fire marshal? That would be a discussion between our building okay. official and fire marshal gotcha. to gotcha. determine what those life safety regulations are. Okay. And, and realistically, it, it will be some signage near the door. I don't know that it will have to be lighted signage, but I'll let those guys figure that out. Fire extinguishers and just a, a safe path in and out of gotcha. these, these facilities. Okay. Good question. All right, hearing nothing else. I'm gonna guess I'm gonna ask if we if I can get a motion to forward the recommendation to the city council to approve the proposed amendments to the code as shown in attachment one. So moved. I'll second that. I got a motion and a second. Any other discussions? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Well, I guess we answer that. We get I from the other way, sir. Yeah, okay. So we got I. And nays, I will be a nay. And that it moved. So moved. Thank you all so much for the comments. This is awesome. Thank you all for being here. This yes, was great. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So great having. to hear from you all. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just thank you for having Yeah, it's, it's, it's 15 years since we've been able to meet in person yes, and, and so not having very many people engage on the Zoom thing. So this is awesome that four people showed up. So thank, thank you. you all so much. Thank you all. Yes. Thank you so much for being thank part you. of the process. It's great. All right. I will now close the public hearing and we will move on to commissioner's report. And I will go on to the online commissioners. We'll go with Commissioner Dewar. Um, only, you know, I wish I could be there with you guys tonight. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't make it. I got uh, some COVID news uh, in the family uh, and I didn't want to be a vector and bring that to our first meeting. <laughs> so I uh, hope the hybrid thing's working good. I can see you and um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Huxford. And I am non-COVID, but I am also non-Verizon. So I had to rearrange some things. So my apologies for not being there. Um, we just wound up on signage and I would just ask that I've been asked to convey to city staff that the signage around the lake that has nothing to do with um, development has increased um, due diligence. It's mostly about re-roofing hauling and gutters at this point, but there's been an influx of temporary signage. And I thought that that was something that was not going to be um, condoned in our new signage law. So it's been brought to me and I'm bringing it to you. Anything else? Nope, thank you. Thank you so much. Here's your hope. I'm just so happy that we're here in person. I mean, for two years, we've been on the Zoom thing and we actually had four people show up. I just think it's nice to be able to have folks in the audience to participate and to get that feedback, I think is awesome. So I'm very excited about being here again. <laughs> Mr. Davis. Uh, I concur with that. It's, it's great. And then um, I, I don't have anything to report, but I did also want to thank our staff and tech and it's, I know it's a challenge to get everything, especially in hybrid form going. And um, it's been fantastic work over the last two years to help us continue our work through COVID. So thank you. Yeah, this is a completely new project. So we did a complete rework of the AV system to get more effective and more uh, customizable as far as how we're So first, first test run. Can I just can I just make the comment that from outside looking in, I cannot hear a word that you say when you're in that spot. Me? I'm not yep. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm 
I'm just I'm for lesson learned because you you moved the mic to one of our our presenters this evening, and it was as soon as you moved it, Mike and I were both like, e "There you go." Yeah, but, we um, remind people to speak into the mic. Unfortunately, yeah, they see the podium, but they just you know forget there's a uh, mic there. And, you know, so yeah, we just got to remind people. Okay. Well, we're we're all learning. Yeah. Commissioner Davis. Yeah, just. Excited to be here. Uh, it was nice to have, uh, it, was, yeah, it was great to have participation from the community. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate the welcome that y'all have provided. And for uh, Commissioner Walsh for the, you know, presenting the amendments and yeah, being able to kind of adjudicate the process. It was great. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll say it is great to be here in person as being someone who's been on the commission for two years, this is my first in-person <laughs> commission meeting. So, and I forgot to mention that Councilmember Peter Shagan was with us. I forgot to mention at the opening. Yeah. Always, oh, I always want to remember Gary. <laughs> and I want to thank staff for all the work, especially on this last, the rental thing. We asked a lot of staff and you guys came through with everything we ever wanted to know. And it was great. It was great to get through this process with you all. So then I'll turn over to the planning director because he has a few things apparently to discuss. Okay. Um... I'll start with the first one that is not on the list, and that is about our future uh, meetings. So as you all know, the farmer's market will be starting up here pretty shortly. So we're working through the logistics of that. The farmer's market will be out on the plaza over here and on the new Festival Street, but we still may choose to move the planning commission to another location or go back virtually. Just uh, trying to work through that. So uh, you might have to bear with us through the summer season, but we're going to try to find an alternative location to meet in person rather than going virtual. If that doesn't work out, your your happiness tonight will be short-lived. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the community's happiness will be <laughs> present. <laughs> oh, so wait a minute. So if it's happening, we still can't use this part of the building? Well, Potentially, yes. But, but then the parking would be a nightmare. Yeah, that's some of the logistics are yeah. the parking, people sort of wandering in and out. What's the noise factor going to be if there are vendor booths? I mean, they should be broken down, but we're also going to be doing a music in the mm -hmm. park series or our yeah. arts and parks totally foundation mm -hmm. is wanting to do that. So it might be a lot of chaos. So we're just going to work towards a goal of having you in person, but worst case, we have to go virtual event for that. Okay. So. Um, the other couple of items just wanted to, to bring to your attention, and Planning Manager Levitan may jump on. Uh, this is the year that we go through the adoption of the new stormwater code. That's one of the uh, development codes that's outside of the Planning Commission's purview because it is a state mandate. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to make you aware that we are going through that update policy, and that's one that will go straight to City Council. Um, and Dave, if you want to add any comments about that, feel free. And then Dave will march into talking about our, our comp plan schedule a little bit. Yeah, so thanks, Russ. Um, didn't have anything really to add to the stormwater code. It's Title 11, um, working closely with Shannon, our uh, surface water coordinator. She's going to be the kind of the main driver of that process. And it's pretty basic updates. It's changing references from the 2012 manual to 2019. And, and there's not really a whole lot be, besides that. So that'll go straight to council as Russ mentioned. Um, moving into the next topic, just wanted to get it on your radar that over the next couple months, um, we're going to be starting to bring forward some of the text amendments uh, for the comprehensive plan docket. Um, we're doing kind of our standard kind of minor amendments to the individual elements or chapters of the comp plan, uh, parks and recreation, land use, capital facilities, public services. Those are, are kind of gonna be housekeeping amendments just to keep the document current, to update list of capital projects. Um, as you will remember, um, the planning commission had recommended and the, the city council did ratify the docket with one citizen initiated map amendment. So we're in the process of getting that application formally in and paid for. And so we'll be doing the environmental review and the technical analysis for that potential comprehensive plan map amendment and zoning change for that property um, on the south side of 20th Street, uh, just east of South Lake Stevens Road. 
Um, so that'll be moving forward. And then we'll also be doing um, kind of the larger land use and zoning analysis within the 20th Street Southeast uh, corridor sub area, kind of looking at potential areas for land use map and zoning map amendments. Um, and uh, as was noted in kind of the brief, the written portion of the director's reports, um, council has asked for us to expedite the schedule a little bit this year, given that there is a citizen initiated map amendment, um, just to get that moving forward. Typically we adopt the docket uh, by ordinance um, typically like in November, or December, city council has asked if possible for us to kind of condense that schedule a little bit. So we're, whereas we might have not started with some of the text amendments until later in the summer or early fall, we're gonna start doing those probably by within the next month or two. Um, as I said, those are pretty minor. And then we'll get into the kind of the larger topics, the citizen initiated map amendment and the city initiated potential map amendments later in the summer um, once we have a little bit more analysis some of the environmental analysis some of the housing and employment needs analysis um, and so i'll be working with russ and others on a kind of a specific schedule but expect to start seeing those text amendments um, coming forward in your next few meetings so that was all i had for tonight great anything else from the director not unless the commission has any questions for me about things going on in the city. I actually have a question. Are we going to be then, with all the stuff we have to do, are we going to be meeting the first and the third Wednesdays for the next several months, or how is that going to work out? Yeah, that seems to be what happens the second half of the year that we sort of ramp up our, our meeting schedules. We will try to be bringing you code amendments on one meeting and comp plan on the next meeting. So I think you can expect that. So we're thinking two meetings, two meetings in May, two meetings in June, two meetings in July, two meetings in, I mean, we're going to be, yeah. Probably through September, okay. I would guess, but we can take a pause and reevaluate that over okay. people's summer vacations and we'll sort of be respectful of that if that's okay. going to be in June or July. Um, and I know the next code amendments we're probably going to move forward. Um, will be the storage unit that sort of got pulled out of some of the work you did last year and then probably moving uh, ahead of schedule will be our code cleanup. Um, we've had that on our list for a long time and just recently a couple of issues of some significance have, have popped up where the code has grown and changed mm -hmm. and a couple of references were changed. So I think we have a good enough list that we want to kind of jump on that. That's really housekeeping. So we should be able to roll through that all really quickly. Not a lot of substantive work, but um, pretty important that we okay. kind of get, get ahead of that. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right. So uh, I'm hoping that then we, we can presumably say that the next meeting will be on May 4th, and we'll be doing it here again for now. Yes. All right. Well, for our next meeting is May 4th, this point at 6 p.m. And then, of course, remain flexible as we may have a second meeting, yeah. obviously, depending on the workflow of, the, of staff. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. Anybody else have any other comments, questions for the order? All right. With that, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. A motion to second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 No one better say no. Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs> oh, so Thank great. you so much.